This is James Danner with Heaton Danner Real Estate and Project RE. We are back on Bigger Pockets YouTube channel, and today we're going to talk about hyper accelerating your wealth through 1031 exchanges and how I took my portfolio of 12 doors and turned it into over 300. Only problem, I bought it from a fake seller. James Danner just walked over to my desk. <laughs> If you skip the first three steps, that's the easiest way to lose money. So what is a 1031 exchange? In the simplest format, a 1031 exchange is when you're selling a property, deferring the taxes, and purchasing a new property. The general strategy behind it is to defer your taxes increase the cash position you have to invest in a new property and trade one property for another and increase the cash flow position, or at least that's how I do it. I started investing in real estate over 12 years ago. Since then, I've slowly grown my portfolio. And what I've had to do is actually evaluate it every year and, and look at whether I should be doing 1031 exchanges and uplugging. I've personally done over 15 1031 exchanges to go from 12 doors to over 300 doors. So is 1031 exchange right for you? I suggest that every investor always review their portfolio annually, see what their current status is with their cash flow and their equity position, and then not just look at what their total cash on cash return is, but always look at your return on your equity. So the main benefit of 1031 exchanges is it allows you to take your tax deferment that you're saving on the sale and apply it towards your next investment purchase. This usually will allow you to increase the size of projects that you can purchase, which is gonna get you either A, more doors or more potential rent income. So I can trade this house for this house and make the same amount of cash flow, if not more, or increase my equity position. So how do you know it's the right time to do that kind of trade? So once a year, we sit down and we look at our portfolio. We look at what's our cash on cash return on, on our current investment properties. We then look at what's our cash on equity, because when you purchase these properties, one of the main benefits is you're, you're collecting appreciation or when you're buying value add, you can create massive equity positions. The purpose of equity is to A, obtain wealth, but also how do you use it? Equity is not good to me unless I'm actually realizing that equity and using it with another potential investment. Many times investors make a huge mistake by thinking they're accumulating wealth and rental properties and have this huge equity position, but equity is only good if you use it. The 1031 exchange allows you to save the taxes on your gain and then apply it towards a new property and increase your cash on cash return. So every year we review our portfolio and we're looking at that position. Another factor that we're looking at is what's the appreciation rate for that specific asset in its specific location. Do we think there's more upside? If we don't think there's enough upside or that we think it's going to more of a standard appreciation, then we're gonna look at can we trade it for a better investment and increase A, our equity position and increase our cash flow position. So what does that even mean? The purpose of buying value add is to create that instant equity position after you stabilize the property. Then what we do is we look at what's the potential appreciation rate for this stabilized asset, or does it have any additional upside? Many of the properties that we have in our portfolio have additional key factors that will increase the upside over time. Those are properties we tend not to 1031 exchange out of. Those are investment properties that have upside in their zoning, maybe it is on a large lot that we can subdivide later, or we think it's in an area where the density may be increased or that, that we think that it has a higher, we call it path of progress, where we think there's a high appreciation rate for that specific area. Once our assets stabilized and, and we think that we've maximized the potential equity in the property and we're in a more standard appreciation rate, which is historically about three to 5%, we then look at do we wanna keep this asset or can we do better? Once the asset's totally stabilized and perfected, I then will sell it on market to an investor that's maybe looking for a more stabilized, more passive investment, and then I'll trade for another value add property. The reason I target value add properties is because it gives me that next equity bump, which is gonna get me into an even bigger property. The larger the property, the more potential I have to increase my cash flow position. So what I've done is I've traded a standard appreciation of three to 5%, I'm buying a value add property that's usually gonna be 20 to 30% under market, 
I'm increasing my equity position and I can increase my portfolio on that trade by 20 to 30% after it's stabilized. By increasing my equity position, this has allowed me to increase my portfolio from 12 to 300 doors rapidly over the last eight years. By doing these trades, it also increases my equity position, which allows me to leverage more and reduce the amount of cash I have in my existing portfolio. So if 1031 exchanges can help you maximize your portfolio, grow your equity position rapidly, and increase your cash on cash return. Why doesn't everyone do it annually? Well, there's a couple key factors you always wanna look at before you start 1031 exchanging. One is I always look at what's the upside in the property. Don't sell off something good. If you have a ton of upside, like a property located in a core area with up, uh, zoning upside where you can maybe develop it later, that's something you might wanna hang on to, but you have to evaluate that yourself. The other main factor is what's your cost of dead time on money? When you are doing 1031 exchanges and you're taking a stabilized asset that has been fully renovated, fully repaired, and it's leased up and generating monthly income, and then trading it for a value-add property that is typically gonna be vacant or you're gonna have to vacate the building, renovate it, which could take anywhere between six months and three years on some of the projects we've done, there's a ton of dead time on your money. So you wanna make sure when you're doing that trade that you have to factor in what your dead time for your construction cost. You are not gonna be able to collect cash flow during this time when you're stabilizing the property and adding the value. Make sure you take a look at that into your key metrics when you're looking at doing your trade. So make sure the trade is worth it. The last thing you wanna do is take a stabilized asset and buy a fixer value add asset and eat up all your equity position by dead time on your money for the next six to 12 months. The second thing I do is establish what my end goal is. We are all chasing financial freedom and wanna live off passive income. We all wanna work less. So what I've had to do is work backwards to what my end goal was and put together the right strategy. I know I wanna own a certain amount of units in the Pacific Northwest and I wanna create a certain amount of cash flow monthly. Currently, I'm about halfway there. So as an investor, it's my job to put the plan in play on how quickly I wanna to get to financial freedom. 1031 exchanges allows you to get there a lot quicker, but it does take a lot of hard work. You constantly are trading out good assets for value add assets. You're chasing that equity position and you're chasing that higher potential cash flow. So as I'm looking at my portfolio, I'm seeing what my current cash flow is. I'm then looking at what my current appreciation rate is gonna be for my entire portfolio. I'm also gonna look at what's my rent increase potential over the next five years for my rent portfolio. And then I'm gonna look at all the math on it. Is that math gonna get me to my end goal or how long will it take me to get there? That's something that you'll have to do yourself. Look at your portfolio, see what your end goal is, find out how much appreciation that you're making on your portfolio and how long is it gonna take you to get there. In addition to, you wanna look at how much cash flow you're currently making, what is your end goal, and how long is it gonna currently get you to be there on your current buying status. A 1031 exchange allows you to jump the line. You're able to trade one asset, increase your equity position, increase your cash flow. So the more trading you do for the right type of asset, the faster you can grow your portfolio. So every year we sit down, we look at our portfolio, we look at the appreciation rate, we look at its annual cash flow, and we look at can we do better? How can we get me to my end goal quicker? Currently, I'm about 50% of the way there and I'm trying to get to a certain end goal. I know if I'm constantly trading things around that in increasing my cash flow position, I can get there in at least half the time. Because I've bought the right type of trade assets, which are value add, that are gonna increase my position, I'm now trying to get to my end goal in half the amount of time, which is the next five years. The goal is to get me to 600 doors in the next five years and have my passive income double over time. Once I get there, I can start kind of taking my foot off the gas. So the 1031 exchange concept is great, but how does it actually work? I'm gonna take you through a case study of three condos that I bought in my early investing days, and I traded it for a four unit in Seattle, Washington in the high-end neighborhood of Queen Anne. In this trade, I was almost able to 10X my rental income, and I picked up over $400,000 in a new equity position once the building was stabilized. So let's walk you through that. So when I was 22 years old, I started my real estate quest and I started accumulating my first set of rental properties. The first set that I acquired were three different separate condos. The reason I target condos is because they were easy for me to renovate. I was a new investor. I didn't have a lot of experience. I was able to stabilize these with carpet, paint, and simple appliance swap outs. They were cheap. 
to where I didn't need a lot of capital to get myself into my first three deals. I roughly left about $40,000 in three different properties during this time. So I was able to accumulate three properties and leave about $40,000 in them. And the other reason I liked the rental properties is they were kind of lower maintenance for me. Yes, I had HOAs to deal with. They were kind of a pain. They ate into my cash flow, but I didn't have to do any maintenance on the exterior of the building, which I really liked as a young real estate professional that was trying to grow his career. So it was a little bit easier for me to manage. I had less cash in the deal because it was a cheap purchase price and it got me into my first three properties to set the baseline for growing my portfolio. So what were the three condos? The first one I purchased was in Burien, Washington. It was in a B-style neighborhood and it was just a cheap purchase. I paid $135,000 for the property. I put $15,000 into the repairs and I was able to cash flow about $2,400 a month in annual income after it was fully stabilized. After three years, the property's value became $275,000. The second condo I bought was in Bellevue, Washington. After purchasing it, renovating it, my total cost basis was about $280,000. The market appreciated at such a rapid rate and I purchased it on a good buy that I had now accumulated over $200,000 in equity. In addition to, I was cash flowing $3,600 a year. The third condo I bought was a value add unit in Kirkland, Washington. I purchased it under market value, renovated it, and my total cost basis was about $150,000 on this unit. During the three year period, it also appreciated about $125,000 in equity, a huge bump. In addition to, it was cash flowing almost $6,000 a year. So this was a really good buy. This was one I thought I was gonna keep forever until I figured out what I could do with that equity position. So after three years, these condos turned into an amazing buy. I was collecting over $12,000 a year in annual cash flow, which is great, and I accumulated over $475,000 in equity. That is amazing, that is a game changer. That is the purpose of buying value add, is to increase that sudden equity position. The problem was, after I really looked at these three condos, that I actually, at the time, I thought I was gonna own forever. They were low maintenance, I was cash flowing, they were making me all these equity, but then I noticed I was only making a 3% return on my equity. I realized that I could do better. And if I wanted to get to my end goal of almost 600 doors, that I had to do it at a quicker pace. I then decided I wanted to make a trade. I wanted to do better. I wanted higher cash flow. I set up a 1031 exchange. I strategically listed them all around the same time. In addition to, the one thing about 1031 exchanges is you're working on a tight time frame. When you sell these properties, you have 45 days to identify your next property. One suggestion I have for people that wanna explore 1031 exchanges is before I actually got the properties ready to sell, I started out locating my next potential investment. This allowed me to not have the pressure of the 45 day timeline. I started an off-market campaign to target a multifamily property and to trade three different locations for one. This would also make my portfolio more simpler to manage. I'm now going from three different cities that take me about 20 minutes each to get to, and now it's all in one central location. I sent out a mailer, I found a potential seller, I let them know what I was doing, that I was facilitating 1031 exchanges, and we came to terms on a purchase. I then listed my three condos, which had an average market time of five days on market, so I knew they would trade quick, and I started the process. We got the properties on market, I contacted a 1031 exchanger where they set up my exchange, I had identified my new investment property, and I got the ball rolling. So what was the next property? It was a value add triplex in Queen Anne, Washington. The main benefit factor in this property is it had an unfinished basement and the zoning allowed for me to create an additional unit. I was then able to purchase a, tri a fourplex at the price of a triplex with the right strategic renovation plan. So what's the math behind it? I paid about a million dollars for the triplex. I then put $250,000 into the renovation, which created an additional fourth unit and stabilized my other three units. That gave me a basis of 1.25 million. After I sold off my condos, it gave me roughly about $475,000 to apply to this new deal, which gives me a debt basis of about $775,000 on this property. After the property was fully stabilized, my annual cash flow increased to over $36,000 a month. Remember, on my three condos before, I was only bringing in $3,100 a month. So this is a massive cash flow increase for me in my own personal portfolio. In addition to, because I created the value by creating the additional unit and stabilizing the property, 
the property value went up to 1.65 million. That's a $400,000 equity position. So I traded these three condos that were maxed out on their equity, that were creating $3,100 a month, and I traded it for a value add triplex that I added an additional fourth unit, and I created almost a half million dollars in equity position, and I increased my cash flow from $3,100 to $36,000 a year. This is a huge increase in my portfolio. And this is the power behind 1031 exchanges. You can make a trade and suddenly massive increase your position all in a 12 month period. During that 12 months, I was able to, I did not collect any cash flow. I also had to factor that I was gonna have to cover the carrying costs for those 12 months. So there's about an additional fifty dollars to $60,000 in cost I had during that 12 month period. But I'm a firm believer of short term pain, long term gain. I'm willing to walk away from stabilized secure cash flow to increase my total overall position. So I'm able to put four to five units on this site future down the road. So I've gone from three condos, I've increased my cash flow, I've increased my equity position, and my appreciation rate in the end goal over a 10 year basis is gonna be almost 5X compared to the condos because I have a development site that I can sell off later. So this trade put me in a better position all the way around. So let's summarize this trade. I traded three condos for a fourplex in Seattle, Washington. I increased my cash flow from $3,100 a year to $36,000 a year. Not only that, I picked up almost a half million dollars in an equity position that I can trade for an even larger project down the road. So before you jump into your next 1031 exchange, remember, analyze your portfolio. What, figure out what your cash on cash return on equity is. Evaluate your upside. Is there a lot of upside in your portfolio or is it kind of getting to its max potential or more standard appreciation rate? And lastly, can you trade and do better? There's no point in doing the trade if you can't upgrade your portfolio. I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. For more investing tips, follow me on Instagram at jdaneflips or on YouTube, Project RE, and make sure you click and subscribe on Bigger Clock's YouTube channel.